All right, let's go now uh, to Illinois, and we'll talk with Betty. Hey, Betty, what do we got? Hey, Andrew. Hey. Um, my question is what your opinion or take is on Halloween and if Christians participate in some of it or any of it. Mm-hmm. I mean, compromise, and also how do you respond to family members that think there's nothing wrong with it with their kids? Okay, yeah. Well, when you look at the origin of, of Halloween, it's obviously pagan. I mean, we can't even uh, dance around that or explain that away. People who try, they end up with egg on their face. I mean, it's obviously got some pretty uh, pagan roots when you look at it, uh, its original source. Um, at the same time, here in America, you fast forward hundreds, thousands of years later, uh, and you've got some Christians who want to give their kids some M&Ms and have them dress up uh, like a Gumby or whatever, whatever's the popular costume today. That's probably 20 years old, 30 years old, but you get my point. Uh, you know, for, for us to make a big deal out of kids going door to door, getting lifesavers and enjoying them or getting gummy bears and, and uh, getting excited about that as they're dressed up as their favorite uh, cartoon character from Nickelodeon or whatever, uh, you know, there's an innocence in that and there's a joy in that and a pleasure in that. And I think we could, if we wanted to, we're free to just give thanks from the heart uh, for that and uh, to enjoy it as a family. Uh, but I think it's it's really when we look at the, the roots of everything, uh, there's, uh, you know, passages about witchcraft in the scriptures and uh, sorcery. There's passages about, uh, obviously, about the enemy. And so if we're going to be using Halloween to celebrate the enemy or celebrate witchcraft or celebrate sorcery, or celebrate the demonic, uh, then that's an altogether different thing. Uh, and so it, it's kind of like Christmas. I mean, you know, Christmas is not too far away either. And when you examine the roots of December 25, you can poke holes in that. Uh, Jesus wasn't born in December. He was more likely born months before that, uh, when the weather was very different and travel was possible and all of that. So. Uh, and yet, uh, even though December 25 might have some pagan roots to it, are we free in Christ to celebrate the birth of Jesus any day, every day, all year long? Yes. So to me, it's about the attitude. It's about the disposition. It's about the perspective. Um, it's like a meat sacrifice to idols. Uh, Paul addresses this with the Corinthians. They're really freaked out about eating meat uh, that has been sacrificed in a pagan temple uh, to idols. And are they free to eat it? Can they make a steak out of it, a hamburger? Or are they somehow participating in devil worship? And, you know, Paul's answer to that is there are no other gods. Give me a break. There's only one God. You know you know him. There are no other gods. So you're free. Uh, go ahead and eat and give thanks in your heart. Now, if somebody else comes to you and makes a big deal out of it, then be sensitive to them out of love uh, because apparently they're the weaker brother. The weaker brother has the conscience about it, but the stronger brother is free and knows his freedom, his freedom to eat meat that is sacrificed to idols. So in the end, do we want to be the weaker brother or do we want to be the stronger brother? And I think there's a strength and a maturity in recognizing our freedom in Christ. So this doesn't mean we act in an unwise way. We want to steer clear of anything that could be misunderstood. Uh, but going door to door, letting your kids have some candy, coming home and counting it all up and saying, how'd you do tonight and getting your candy and then, hey, take a week to eat it. Don't eat it all in one night. I mean, that's just fun. It's fun for kids. And I think the last thing they want to hear is Jesus doesn't want you to get that candy uh, because, you know, they're going to misunderstand it. And what they're going to take away is Jesus is a killjoy. At the end of the day, it's about our perspective. It's about us uh, sanctifying something through the giving of thanks. We're, we're setting apart 
in our own minds uh, something that we're doing by simply giving thanks to God for it. So there's a, a Christian freedom there. And I think it applies to celebrating Christmas today. It applies to meat sacrifice to idols 2,000 years ago. It applies to kids and candy on Halloween. Uh, there's a great liberty. Uh, most importantly, uh, let's just convey the gospel. The gospel is not let's kill all the holidays. The gospel is come to Jesus. Fix your eyes on him. He will give you total forgiveness, past, present, and future. He will give you the gift of righteousness so that you can be saved now and forever and no matter what. If we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus and keep focus on what he is offering, not what he isn't prohibiting, but what he is offering, then we've got the healthiest message on the planet. That's my take. I hope that helps tonight, Betty. Uh, reach out to us again anytime. <music>